let's go to John chapter 4. Uh, we begin from verse 7. This is a very familiar portion of scripture, but I believe the word of God is new every morning. Amen. Amen. This is what the word of God says. I'm reading from Amplified. Then a woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone off into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman asked him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For the Jews have nothing to do with Samaritans. And Jesus answered her, if you knew God's gift and who it is who says, give me a drink, you will have asked him and he will have given you living water. She said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well, and who used to drink from it himself? and his sons and his cattle. Jesus answered her, everyone who drinks this water will, th will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water that I give him will never be thirsty again. But the water that I'm, I give him will become in him a spring of water Wailing up, flowing, up bump, uh, flowing, flowing, bubbling within him to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not get, get thirsty nor come all the way here to draw. And this is the word of God. Kindly you can have your seat. kutoka nyumbani na mafua so good morning once again you are well it's nice to see you thank you pastor dr pastor marion uh, for the opportunity to share the word of god pastor noah my fellow pastors and leaders who are here uh, as always paul has said i count myself not to have reached you know so anytime i am given an opportunity to share it is such a privilege and honor. Amen. I have always considered myself as a, as a doctor also. But a spiritual doctor. Okay. Uh, because uh, pastors have a gift of uh, dealing with heart issues. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And our consultation fee is very, is very, is very, is very low. Our consultation fee. All that you need to do for you to receive the services of Dr. Pastor spiritual doctor for that matter is to say the truth amen hello yes because most of you or most of the people when they come to the pastor they beat around the bush one particular time before i got married uh, i was living in a self-confused uh, uh, room uh, praise the lord you know it's good to remember such kind of things when the lord lifts you up you're able to remember where you've come from and my neighbor was a lady who was also single and I was three months to my wedding day. So one particular Friday night, she came in and I was watching a movie. Uh, and she started crying so loudly that I could hear from the other side. So I got disturbed. I could not continue to watch the movie. So I decided to go and knock. We were not very close, but I knew she comes from, we come from the same county, you know. So I went there, knocked, and she asked, Ni nani? Nikamwambia ni mimi jirani. Unataka nini? Nikamwambia nataka kujua kwa nini unalia usiku. Uh, so she said no. And I continued to knock until she opened. So I went in. Uh, Nikaketi kwa kiti and then she continued crying, crying, crying. I didn't say anything. Until she stopped crying. So I asked her, what, 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 what is the problem? And um, 
she said, uh, the man that she has been dating and they were about to get married, she has discovered that the man has another woman and the woman is already, already has a child. Ah, okay. So having been in that place where my wife is not the, the first woman I met, and I have been in that place of Kuwachwa, for me it was not a big deal. I'm like, you too, you know? <laughs> so I told her, okay. We had not had conversations before, so I didn't have details about her life. But I asked, are you a Christian? And she said, yes. Do you believe in God? Yes. Are you born again? Yes. Now, my desire would have been that the tears that you've been shedding would have been tears of joy. That God has allowed you to know about this thing before you got married. Compared to if God would have revealed this to you after the marriage, what would you have done? So she looked at me and wondered, what are you talking about? I said, yes. You are safer to be on this other side than to be on the other side. Story short, uh, she just smiled. That is all, it's past midnight. So I said, okay. Thank you. God bless you. Can I pray? Of course I prayed. And then I went back to my room. But because I had cooked, and I know she seemed like she did not cook, like, uh, uh, I went back and told her, follow me with your plate. So I uh, shared with her some food. Because and relax and wait on God. The Bible says no one will lack a mate. So God is going to bring somebody into your life. Now, all that is not a problem. The problem for me was that I'm getting married in three months' time. And this is midnight. Of course, she suggested that we watch the movie together. And I'm like, um, okay. I didn't trust myself, you know. <laughs> I, I didn't trust myself. So I told her, no, no, no. You go and have food. We will talk the rest tomorrow. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. One of the things I have come to learn in this journey of faith, you, you, you build up capacity within you before things come or before the devil tempts you. Okay? You have an opportunity to build your capacity now before things happen. You may think you're not a thief, but it's because maybe you've never had an opportunity to steal. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. I knew that when my boss some time back traveled out of the country and I was uh, his driver and um, VIP, all this kind of thing, protocol, and he left me in charge of his house his bedroom and his safe and he told me to use my password for the time that he's out of the country so they, i did that so one day i got curious and uh, curiosity killed mr cat you know so i decided to go and open the safe and i mean just want to know what is it for security reasons and all these kind of things <laughs> so i opened the safe and uh, I saw two short guns, very nice guns, and um, money in euros and money in dollars. So they decided to count, just to be sure. <laughs> so I counted, I counted, I counted until I went for lunch. And I came back and I counted and did the mathematics. I, I estimated that, uh, I was not sure, but I estimated that to have been 145 million in 2013, not today. And I closed the safe and I went to sleep. <laughs> Did I look a fool? Yes, before the eyes of men. Uh, because of what I said, I said it's good to build capacity. So I had worked with God for some time. And in my previous church, I was in charge of the offering and carried offering for many years. And there are times I would take the offering to the office, about half a million, and I didn't have fare to go home. And I would still walk home. Praise the Lord. That was not my message. Okay? Praise the name of the Lord. We are, this month we are, in that series, we are calling Light Up. You can add light up the world. Okay? Uh, last Sunday, we were able to look at Jesus Christ, the light of the world. And this morning, I want to take us through looking at Jesus, 
or the living water. Hallelujah. Living water. As I said, this is a very familiar scripture or portion of scripture for all of us or most of us have had this portion of scripture before. But I try to paraphrase and, and see how, how God is going to lead us. Jesus, his earthly ministry had a number of challenges including means of transport. In any case, there was no red road, ne road network as such. And so he did his ministry mostly working with his disciples. And so this particular time, they have done ministry during the day. And at about midday, uh, he sits somewhere in a well, having sent his disciples to go and look for food. Meaning Jesus was human, that he was able to eat. And then a woman comes and uh, they start a conversation. One of the things, Pastor Noah, I pick from that portion of scripture is a curriculum for evangelism. Yes, a curriculum for evangelism. You look at how Jesus took time to talk to this woman and you understand or you realize most of us have always been ineffective in our evangelism because of a number of things that we do not know. One, I believe the best evangelism that you can do is when you create a relationship or you create a rapport with the kind of a person that you want to reach out to. Are we together? This particular woman thought that Jesus was one of those many men that he has, he has, she has always had. And the reason she was at the well midday, it is because of her behavior and her character. And she didn't want anybody to know her or to even meet with her. That is why she was coming to draw water during midday. When I was young in primary school, all that I knew is maji wa yanachotwa asubui mapema. Those of us who have come from Shags, you understand that. Not midday. Midday is when people are coming back. Okay? So this particular woman is at the well at this particular time. And Jesus begins a conversation with a very simple thing. Give me water to drink. And the woman says, how do you, how, how you don't have a bucket. They understand if you're doing mujengo and uh, the, the, so the water source is a well, you need a rope and a bucket to be able to put down and then bring it up. So she was right to tell Jesus that you do not have a bucket and you don't have a rope. You don't have anything to draw water. And the conversation continues. Very well and very good conversation continues between Jesus and this particular woman. Until we get to that place where other things happen, uh, Jesus begins to ask, Are you, go and bring your husband, all these kind of things. I, I said I'm, I'm, I'm trying to just paraphrase because I want to believe this is a scripture that you know, a portion of scripture. But my interest is the fact that Jesus was never tired because his mission here on earth has been to look for that which was lost. That is his mission. And so this woman, because Jesus is God, he was able to want to know that this, this, this woman has no relationship with anybody. In any case, she's a Samaritan. Samaritans were, I would say, a, a race that was between, okay, let me say, Israelites at some point were scattered, and when they were scattered, they got intermarried with, with, uh, with foreigners. And so Samaritan came from that particular kind of a race. Jews considered Samaritans to be less, less, less Jew. They never, they, they never were close to each other because for them, Samaritans, these were people that did not know God, so we don't have business. That is why this woman is reminding Jesus and telling Jesus, what business do you have with Samaritans? We have nothing. Like some communities in Kenya. Praise the Lord. And you ask them why they fight each other, you will not know. They will not tell you. So this thing is not new. It has been in the Bible for the longest time. And then she explains to Jesus how they had a particular place of worship as Samaritans and the Jews also had a place of worship, physical or geographical location where they were worshiping, which is Jerusalem. And then in the midst of the conversation, Jesus brings her to the place of realization that this is not the same man or this is not this is not a man like any other man that you have ever met in your life and at some point she is able to perceive that this is not 
any other man because he says, are you a prophet? Yet this is somebody who has never been close to the things of God. But she gets to that place of realizing there must be something unique with this man from the time that we've had this conversation. And Jesus tell her, you know what? The kind of water that I will give you, you will never, this one, this water that you're talking about, the well that was dug by Jacob and handed over to his son Joseph and the rest that were using this uh, well for their own uh, purpose and many other things, Jesus tells her, this water is water that when you drink, you will thirst again. But the water that I will give you, you will never thirst again. So she said, okay, give me that water. Her understanding was still on the physical water. So maybe she thought uh, Jesus has a company, construction company, so she's going to pump water into her house and stuff. But for her, it was this physical water that she was still looking at that when I get this water, in fact, she said, so that I don't come back to this well again because it is tiresome to go get water very far away from the community. And the conversation goes on until she gets to the place of realizing that this is somebody that is very different. And Jesus opens her spiritual eyes to see and she gets to understand that this water is not physical water, but spiritual water. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, I wanted to understand this living water thing uh, so for, for the purpose of understanding, for the purpose of my study. I wanted to understand this water thing, living water. And as I did my research, I discovered in the ancient time and those days where Jesus lived and uh, the Jews, the living water was a source of water naturally flowing from a particular mountain. And that, 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 that the, the water will be directed to a small pool that was closed. Okay? So, a a, so it is a source of water that is coming from a particular mountain, but it is directed to a small pool and it will be harvested or it will be stored there. So that water, because it came from a mountain and it was not interfered with anything, they call it living water. Now, when you draw the water from the pool and store it somewhere else, it ceases from, be from being living water. Uh, they call it, uh, the pool was called uh, mikveh. Uh, my brother J.K. will help us because he's a student in Hebrew. Yeah, but I, I allow me to mention that word. So that pool was called that name. What was it for? That pool was meant for purification rituals of the Jews. And if you remember last Sunday, we said that as much as there was a window period of about 400 years from the end of Old Testament to the New Testament, the Jews were not left hanging. God left them with the law. But the Pharisees and the scribes, teachers of the law, religious leaders, added so many other laws into the law that, Jesus, that God had given to them through Moses. And so, Jesus, at this particular time, he specifically planned to go to the temple at a particular function, those feasts that the Jews have, that would run for seven days. So Jesus decided that before the seven days are over, I would go there. But in the previous uh, uh, books of the gospel, the gospels, you realize Jesus had conversation with his brothers and he told them, you go. And they went to the feast of tabernacles. And Jesus remained behind. And at this particular time, of course, people have been looking for Jesus to kill him. So why would you show up in public when you know that your enemies are looking for you? But Jesus, in the fourth day, he decided to go to the temple for that feast. 
And he goes there, not as a king, not announced, not with any convoy, but he goes in silently and stays as the feast was going on. And then he begins to teach a number of things in that particular time. And while he was teaching, the wisdom and the authority that Jesus Christ had became an issue to the Pharisees and the scribes. They were asking, where did you learn these things? We have not seen you in any of our classes. There were classes, they used to call them rabbinical classes or rabbinical school where uh, rabbis were taking time to teach people about the law of Moses. And these guys were very good about knowing they knew a lot about God, but they've never had an encounter with God. But they knew about God. And so, Jesus gets, gets into a conversation because he realized that they would, they would fetch water from that pool that we are talking about that has living water and then they will bring it to the altar and begin to sprinkle into, into the altar for the purpose of purification. Now, if today you visit a mosque, even if you're not a Muslim, they will tell you to remove shoes and they will tell you to go and wash your hands. True or not true? So even the Jews at that particular time, anybody that visited the temple would be taken to that uh, mikveh to wash before they went into the temple. Now, if this feast is going to run for seven days, you can imagine this is the only place that Jews met for worship. How many people were waiting to get into the pool to be able to purify themselves to go into the temple for the purpose of worship? How long queues were there at that particular time? So those are among the ceremonial uh, laws that the, 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 the Pharisees had added into the law that was given to them. And so Pharisees challenged Jesus and asked him, we have seen your disciples eating without washing their hands. What do you say? They wanted to test him whether he, he believes in the law or does he respect the law. But you remember last Sunday, we read, a, we read a, a verse in Matthew chapter 5 verse 17 where Jesus said, I did not come to abolish the law but to fulfill the law. Now, I like how Jesus had conversations with his people and his audience. That you ask him a question and then he asks you a question. And if you're able to answer, then you're able to move on with the conversation. If you don't answer, then I see up. So this particular time, Jesus decides to quote a scripture in the book of Isaiah. Where Isaiah says, my people with their lips seem to show that they really love me, but their hearts are very away or far from me. Jesus is quoting the book of Isaiah. So that he can defend himself from the teachers of the law. And the conversation goes on. He even goes back to talk about something that Moses had written and said, some of you have made vows, for lack of a better word, to the church or to the temple that you will be taking certain amounts of money to the temple, but you use that as an excuse for you to neglect the responsibility of taking care of your parents. Exodus chapter 20, where we read the commandments, uh, commandment number five. What does it say? Hello? Number five? Honor your parents, honor your mother and your father. So Jesus referred them back to that and told them, how come you have neglected the responsibility of taking care of your parents because you have made a vow to the temple? In any case, when you make a vow to the temple, you should be able to set aside something else and make sure that you still fulfill your responsibility as a child to be able to, be able to take care of your parents. And so all this is a conversation that is going on in John chapter 7, for Jesus allowed them to go and he tries to bring them to the place of saying, you know what? It is only me that was able to fulfill the law to the latter. You have tried to fulfill the law, but you will never fulfill the law. 
Jesus fulfilled the law because he is God in human form. And so it was easy for him to keep the law perfectly without breaking any of those laws that were kept. And he was trying to tell them, you know what? You can never keep the law. You need something else more than the law. Praise the name of the Lord. And so he gets to the place and tells them, okay, now this is my argument. It is not that which comes from outside, because he was saying, when you eat without washing your, hand, your hands, you are already defiled. Jesus is saying, it is not that which comes from outside that defiles a man, but that which comes from the inside. Okay? And he goes on to say, it is from the heart that flows rivers of water. So meaning, at this particular time, what is it that comes from inside? Some of the things that come from inside, from the heart, is lust, murder. All these kind of things that you talk about come from the heart. So I want to believe, by the time you hear somebody murdered, whatever, they do not just wake up and murder somebody. They've had, there is something that has been in their hearts for a long time. And so whatever it is in your heart flows out. So by the time you commit such kind of evil, it must have come from the outside. So Jesus was saying, no, no, you can eat bread without washing your hands, and that does not defile you. But how about you scribes and teachers of the law that seem to be very careful and concerned to, to, to the law, but they neglect something that is very important, encounter with Jesus. That is one thing that they neglected. And so Jesus was there and he would see how people are trying to keep these uh, regulations, ceremonial laws, particularly this one, purification of the body. So they are concerned. Like um, I, I hear sometimes people, I don't know, uh, I don't agree. I hear sometimes Christians say, uh, our Muslim brothers, uh, are we brothers really? Hello, Simone are we brothers really? Uh, what, what brothers are we talking about? One of the things that we know from history is that Abraham had two sons, child of the promise, which is Isaac, and then Ishmael. Ishmael was born uh, by a foreign woman. All right? So according to the law, if we go that direction, then Ishmael is not the son of the promise. But Abraham gave instructions to God and said, don't release him empty-handed. So there's something that Ishmael was given, which today we believe that is why the Middle East, they have all this kind of money. Hello? Hello? I, I, I've been very keen to look at what is happening in the Middle East, uh, particularly the war between Israel and uh, uh, Hamas. JK, you said Hamas means what? Violence. Violence. Okay. Apparently, I'm seeing, I've, I've seen protests across the world against Israel, and maybe they do not know that Hamas means violence. They did that in Mombasa once, Wakabachana Nayo. Muslims in Mombasa, Waislamu too, you know, not those Muslims. Okay? Now, who funds Hamas and Hezbollah and all these kind of things? Did you know there are countries? that support Hezbollah, Hamas, Al-Shabaab, Al-Qaeda, all these terrorist organizations are funded by countries. And even when Muslims are giving money, they give towards that. That is how they believe in their kingdom. I haven't seen any Christian nation so far that has sent any kind of aid to Israel. In Kenya, we say we are 80% Christians. When Donald Trump moved the capital city of, uh, I mean, moved their embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of that country, there's one particular African country that moved his embassy to within a very short time, Malawi. The president currently is a bishop. He's been doing meetings in Kenya for some time. Nazis wa Kenya? I'm not being political, but this is the truth. <laughs> okay? Anyway, that was besides the story. But the Jews and the, the, the scribes and all these people concentrated so much on 
physical purification that was so tedious during their festivals, but none of them was very much keen about internal purification. And so the reason why Jesus Christ was at this particular feast, this particular day, was to bring the light and to bring the, the understanding that other than anything else, they needed something more than the purification that they've been doing for quite some time. And so he goes on to say in John chapter 7, John chapter 7 verse 37, now on the last and most important day of the feast, Jesus stood, called out in a loud voice, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, trusts, he who, be, he who believes in me, who adheres to trust in and relies on me, as the scripture has said, from his innermost being, will flow continually rivers of living water. Now, what is this living water that Jesus Christ is talking about? He answers that in verse 39. But he was speaking of the Holy Spirit, whom those who believe in, in him as Savior, were to receive afterward. The Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus was not yet glorified. In other words, the Spirit of God was not yet active in the lives of believers because Jesus Christ was still here on earth. It is until that particular time that Jesus tells his disciples, it is better that I go so that the helper may come. And he was talking about the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus, as he is talking to these people and helping them understand, he is talking about living water, but he meant that the Holy Spirit is the living water. Praise the name of the Lord. And so that means for me as a believer, the very first step for me to take as I desire to become rivers of flowing water, it is the first step of accepting Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and believing that he is the Son of God. That is my first step as a believer. Then moving forward, immediately you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit who has been promised or was promised by Jesus Christ immediately comes and lives in you. Now, uh, when we go to Galatians chapter 5, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, meaning when the Holy Spirit lives in me as a believer, I get to that place where I begin to give birth to fruits of the Holy Spirit that include love, joy, peace, uh, kindness, self-control, and all these kinds of things. But later on in the book of Ephesians, you realize there's a difference between uh, 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 gifts and fruits. Fruits are given by the Holy Spirit, but at the same time, even the gifts, now we are talking about the gifts of a, um, a prophecy, the gift of apostle, all those are given now by his Spirit by the end of the day. But this is it. That I need to get to the place where as a Christian and as a believer, that what comes out of me is rivers of living water. In other words, where I live, where I work, where you work, where you stay, even within your family setup, there has got to be evidence of Jesus living in you or has been living in you through his spirit for you to begin to, sh to, to, to show this living water that Jesus Christ is talking about. And it's very categorical to say that this living water that I'm talking about is a spirit is my spirit. In other words, Jesus Christ from the time he ascended and went to heaven, now sit at the right hand of the Father, it is, it is the spirit that he left here on earth that lives in us that is working. And so if I'm carrying the Holy Spirit, how is my life supposed to be as a believer? If all that I carry is the Holy Spirit, how is my life as a believer supposed to be? Jesus is saying that when you carry the Spirit, then you have knowledge, you have understanding, you have revelation. It means I can go to a place and the environment is supposed to change because of that which I carry. 
And I have been praying and trusting God and saying, Lord, I desire that in my lifetime, that the evidence of the Spirit of God that lives in me, I'll be able to see it with my own eyes. Not that I haven't seen, but there are those, there are those manifestations, you know, where you, you, and we have seen this in the lives of many fathers of faith, where they, 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 they walk and you see their life and you can testify that these people carried God in their lives. And we are short, we are short of the capacity to carry, to manifest the power of the Holy Spirit in us. And so one of the things that uh, rivers of flowing water does to us, in any case, uses of water, water refreshes people. When you're thirsty, you take water, naturally you feel refreshed. Water cleanses. All of us have taken a shower, believe so. Water cleanses. Now, if that is the natural use of water, then the Holy Spirit who lives in you and me, who Jesus is calling the living water, should be able to refresh you fast. Cleanse you fast. And then from there you are able to refresh others. And you are able to cleanse others. You are able to walk with people. And when you walk with them, they can testify there is something that is unique. And I pray that this particular season, we will refresh people as much as we can. Amen. People that are giving up, hope, giving up hope. And for them, you know what? This is not going to work. Things have been very bad. We are there to refresh them and tell them, you know what? You can believe in this God. And I can tell you the life of a believer is a very hard life. Why? We believe the word of God, yet we have never seen God. We have never seen Jesus Christ. But by the grace of God, this revelation has been released to us that we believe that God is alive in us and lives in us. And we can confidently talk about this God because of what he has done in our lives. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. My name is Sophia Son. So are you thirsty this morning? Thirsty for the things that you have desired and trusted God the whole of this year? We have been in the, in the theme of fruitfulness. Some of us have already eaten the fruits that they were trusting God for. John chapter 15, verse 8. Some of us are still holding on and trusting God for fruitfulness in whichever area that you're trusting God for fruitfulness. And one of the things that really comforts my heart is that as much as we are few uh, days to, the, to, 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 to next year, but the word of God says, one day is like a thousand years before God. So when I'm counting ten days, God is not worried. That means you cannot give up hope at this particular time. You can still hold on. And your fruits will come. Amen? Your fruits will come. But I also know as we trust God to be fruitful in whatever area that we are trusting God for, there is going to be a price to pay for whatever fruitfulness that we are trusting God for. Why? If a farmer goes to the shamba today, they have the, they have an opportunity to plow, to cultivate, to plant, and to water, and wait and continue weeding or removing the weeds until harvest time comes. So maybe you have a, your harvest time has not yet come. You are still at the place of watering the flower, watering the plants, and trusting God, even as you wait for your time of harvest. Praise the name of the Lord. So what is it that we are going to do, even as we desire to refresh people around us? I pray that you get into, you step into the flow. The flow of the a flow, the flow of the living water. Step into that flow. Seek the Lord more. Spend time more. As a church, we meet every Tuesday for prayer service. Would you purpose that next year that will be one of the things that you're going to do? As you come for that prayer, attend this prayer, that is how you draw from Jesus. That is how you draw the living water. And you will be refreshed even as you do that. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen.
Don't forsake the gathering of the saints like we have done today. And in our e-groups, let's be consistent because as we sharpen one another within e-group levels and share with one another, share testimonies, pray with one another, that is how we get refreshed. That is how we get to drink from one another because I believe that there are times that someone else is refreshed more than you do. You need to be close to them and they'll be able to refresh you. It's like if today you go there, God forbid, and your car is not starting, all that you need to do is to have jumpers and get to one of us and we'll jump start you. Is that so? Yeah. That is what revival is. Yes. Yeah. It's where you receive fire. And when you receive fire, you share the fire. You jump start other people. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's bow our head and pray. Father, we thank you. We bless your name this morning for ministering to us. I pray in Jesus' name that, Lord, rivers of, flow, uh, rivers of living water will begin to flow from our hearts. The Lord, as you refresh us, may we refresh others. As you cleanse us, we pray that we will be close to people that need to be cleansed. In the mighty name of Jesus. And maybe you're here and you're saying, Pastor, this is what I have desired. But you have no relationship with the Lord. Why don't you make a commitment at this particular time and say, Lord, I need this living water and I am here to surrender my life to you. You're here this morning. You want to give your life to Christ. Why don't you lift up your hand? Somebody will reach out to you and they'll be able to lead you to that place of your commitment to your relationship with the Lord. Is there any one of us this morning? Amen. Father, we bless you. We honor you as we live this service. We pray that, Lord, you will go before us. And every activity before us, we declare that it is blessed of the Lord. For I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Leslie, for sharing with us the scripture of the day and the word of God that... Jesus is the living water and you can only get the living water if you are connected to the source. If you are not connected to the source then the water ceases being living water. It becomes something else. It becomes a ritual. Pray that you don't get into a ritualistic environment but to trust in God and be connected. Amen. Good. Just here to bring to us a few notices they are also calling us to a place of prayer as a community of believers. I know one of the responsibilities we are taking home it is to nourish other people. It is to refresh others as you go out. Uh, and this week we have had, uh, we've had a number of things happening around us that I would like to bring to our notice and that you will be able to participate in to nourish others. Now uh, we have had a number of deaths in this week. Uh, loved ones who have gone to be with the Lord in the course of the week. Actually within a span of two days four members had lost their families. We have one uh, by the name Ken. Ken lost his father on Tuesday. On Tuesday night. And uh, Ken comes from Nanyuki. They are laying the father to rest on Wednesday in Nanyuki. Jeff uh, lost his father on Wednesday morning. And uh, Jeff uh, comes from Machakos. They are laying the father to rest on Saturday in Machakos. We have one of us. Actually, Ken serves with the ushering team. Jeff serves with um, uh, Quest. But Ken, Ken and Jeff all of them come from an e-group in Kiunguru. So we keep praying for them. Then Alan Deritu also serves with us in Quest. Lost the mother uh, a few days ago also. And uh, they're laying her to rest on Friday in Nyaururu. And therefore let's keep praying for them. And Anne, who also a member here in church and a member of New Guacairo A group lost her mother on Tuesday night and they're laying the mother to rest on Saturday. So we have four deaths among us that we need us to stand together with one another. If you're a lady, join the Waridi team. You'll find the information there how to support. 
If you are a gentleman amongst us, go to any gentleman and join Jabari. There is enough information there how we are able to support them. So let's support these families. Let's pray with them. Let's cancel, let's console with them and pray that God be with them. Let's be available on Wednesday to head to Nanyuki just to stand with Ken. On Saturday, we'll be divided into two groups. One group heading to Machakos, another group heading to Othaya for the burial of those two loved ones. But then on Friday, we congregate together to head to Nyaururu to stand with our brother Alan and the wife actually who serves in the worship team in the laying to rest of their lovely mother. Isn't that heavy for us? Still, thank you to hold the hands of your neighbor and stand together so that you're able to pray for the lovely ones. If you remember Ken, pray for Ken. You remember Jeff, pray for Jeff. If you remember Alan, pray for Alan. If you remember Ann, pray for Ann. So let's get to a moment of prayer for those families. But also as we pray, let's remember Sister Caroline Mwai, who is still back actually in hospital. We've been praying for her. Pray for her. She's actually currently at KU referral. And she had a procedure in the course of the week. Let's continue to pray that the Lord remembers her and heals her. Friends, let's pray. That's one of the best gifts you can offer to someone who's been bereaved. They are far away from us. Let's pray for them as you hold hands together. Let's refresh them. Let's nourish them. Let's be there for them. Let's support them financially. You find that information in Jabari. You find that information in Waridi. Let's continue to uphold these families. It, today it is them. Tomorrow we do not know what is happening. But let's go out there. Reach out and pray with them. Reach out and support them. Reach out and encourage them in the name of the Lord. Reach out and be an encouragement to Alan. Be an encouragement to Anne. Be an encouragement encouragement to Jeff, to be an encouragement to Ken. We pray that God will be united as a family of believers as this year, oh God, and stand with one another, oh God. Lord, earlier on in the service, oh God, we prayed, oh dear God, the Lord God made this wave of death, oh dear Father God, be stopped on behalf of this love, of this congregation. And Lord, we're praying, oh God, for comfort, for strength. We're praying, dear Master, for courage, for praying, oh God, for grace over this love one in this week. We're trusting in your name. The Lord will be of an encouragement to them in Jesus' name. Just before we go, I'd like us to bring a few notices. I know in the afternoon, young adults, 19, all the way before the age of getting married, we are having a concert here all the way to 6 p.m. Let's go and come back together. But then next week, we'll be having one service that will run uh, from 10 to noon next Sunday. And the following, that is on the 24th and 31st, we'll be running one service. So come for one service between 10 and noon. Uh, and then uh, we'll be blessed together. And then on 31st, please remind your neighbor in the evening, what do you have? Most of us are used to we used to coming. We we'll go back home at midnight. No, we are here till uh, 5 a.m. in the morning on that 31st. So let's come and let's be refreshed together in the presence of the Lord. That neighbor you are praying with it are concerning the bereavements we have. Remind them the three things we've learned today from the word of God. I know we talked about Jesus is the living water. But water does what? It quenches our thirst. It cleanses us. But at the same time, it refreshes us. Assure them, may you be refreshed by the Lord. Share the words of the grace of God. May the grace...